Welcome to Last Set News. My name is Rob. And every so often, we want to talk and make a video which kind of zooms out and just sees everything for the big picture for what it is. And what we're going to go over today is real quickly is first of all, is the market cap and trend line. Now, this is from uh, Ben's website in the cryptoverse. I use it all the time, steal as much information as I possibly can, give it to you. But uh, there's a link in the description you should probably use yourself. So, what I'm talking about is this this market cap and trend line. And I know how it goes because I've been in this game since 2017. And a lot of times we just get so narrowly focused on today, the here and now, what's going on, what's happening. And it's all about this moment in time. But in reality, as investors, if we take a look forward, things are looking pretty good. And this right here, this will just show you Ex essentially how things could potentially play out. Now, not, not to say that is going too definitely or is not, but it just takes a look at just some, some bands, some upper value, some a fair market value, which is in the green, and then the lower band. As we can see, uh, the entire crypto market cap has maintained itself within this band for quite some time. Sometimes it goes way, way above. Sometimes it goes way below but we've only ever seen it cross under this band a heck of a long time ago. And we're talking about in 2010, when the, title, when the entire market cap of crypto was a whopping 256,000. Yeah, 256,000. So if we take a look here, and what I'm trying to do is just gonna show you just how we, how we went and where we're at right now, where I think we're potentially going. And of course, the trend line, the fair market value, in May 2022, we actually hit it. The fair value, $1.2 trillion. That was in four, uh, 14th of May 2022, which means we were right where we were supposed to be at. Now, of course, we we dipped down, you know, little problems with FTX and the different uh, rug pulls that have been going on, but and we are uh, well below that. But I want you to notice is just fo focus on this. See this red line? And again, we could be up, we could be down, but we're going to be somewhere above, somewhere below, somewhere around the middle of where this is. And if you have watched the show, you know I'm a big believer in uh, the four-year cycles. And I can just tell you that if we're taking a look and we extrapolate this out to maybe December 2025, the fair market value is almost $7 trillion market cap. $7 trillion. That is double what we had in the last bull run. I think we were at 3.1, 3.2 trillion, somewhere around there. And Bitcoin topped out at 69,000. 69, we'll just round up for 70, maybe say 140,000 if we double the market cap, depending on the Bitcoin dominance. So again, we could be below that, but wouldn't that be just awful if we were at, oh, I don't know, in a couple of years, maybe 4 trillion, 4.5, 5 trillion, meaning we are way above what our, old all-time highs were, or maybe we're even above it. Who knows? Because historically, if we take a look at it, we don't just hit this fair market value. We tend to go above it as time moves on. So again, when I talk on this channel, I know some people kind of get uh, tired of me harping on the same thing, but it really is just attrition and just sticking around for time. It's just like the military. Just show up in the right uniform, usually get promoted. That's all you got to do with investing. Now, it's not always going to be you just throw some money into it and everything's going to go up. You have to do a ton of research and look for the ones that have stability. But for me, for right now, I'm looking at, I mean, we've got over two years to do what I've been doing for, for the longest time, which is dollar cost average, stick around. And then in a couple of years, I mean, even if we were at, even if we were at the fair market value and we hit the lower band in 2025, Let's just say for some reason, I don't know why, but we hit the lower band in November, December 2025. The lower band will be at 2.05 trillion for the entire market cap. We're roughly at 1 trillion. So you're telling me in a couple of years you could still double your money? Oh, woe is me. So these are just the things that could potentially play out. I'm not saying it is not financial advice, but it, things do look like we're in the right place at the right time. And also on top of that, there's some more good news. This was an article put out uh, by Coindex and it takes a look at the Mt. Gox bankruptcy repayments unlikely to destabilize Bitcoin. And it really just comes out of these two sentences. So it states creditors of crypto exchange Mt. Gox are about to recover some of their funds following a 10 year liquidation process. Concerns the large amounts of Bitcoin will be released in the market are overdone, a UBS said in a report Monday. The rehabilitation plan 
gives creditors several options on how they are repaid. The most important are take an early lump sum or wait and whether to receive that funds in fiat or crypto. So again, what we're going to talk about in a little bit is are these people who lost or got their uh, Bitcoin stolen, are they going to take it in crypto? Probably hang around or just say, give me some cash. So the early lump sum option with fiat represents uh, repayment suggests that the exchange would have to sell Bitcoin to raise that cash, obviously. So as a reminder, Mt. Gox was hacked in 2014. 850,000 Bitcoins went missing. The exchange was able to recover only 142,000 of Bitcoin. 143,000 in Bitcoin cash, eh, and 69 billion Japanese yen, which is like 500 million. That's about 20%. The other 80%, who knows? So from there, they state in reality, because people think that it's all going to get dumped, much less will come to market. And this is one of the reasons why. A recent report says two of the largest creditors with a combined share claim of 20%. So 20% of the entire claim have opted for the crypto payout, not the cash payout. New supply could still come to market, but this at least implies it will be less concentrated. Such news would have been an additional factor for BTC's surprising resilience of late. So that makes me a little more bullish. Finally, we get these, these goofy stories as Mt. Gox going to crash everything. And then lastly, I thought it was interesting, is... Visa says it's not slowing down plans for crypto products. And this all came about, there was a Reuters article where it talked about how Visa and MasterCard were slowing down their crypto push. This was inaccurate when it comes to Visa. And this is from uh, Coy Sheffield, part of the Visa team, says, despite the challenges and uncertainty in the crypto ecosystem, Visa believes that fiat-backed digital currencies running on public blockchains have the potential to play an important role in the payments ecosystem. Look, I was just talking with a couple of people here in Puerto Rico. There's a couple of different projects that if you're a business owner, you know how much Visa pays or how much it actually charges. MasterCard, PayPal, Venmo, Ateache, all those things. It's well above 2% in certain sectors and certain areas. However, with crypto payments, imagine if you're a business owner and you can take any kind of payment. It could be crypto. It could be a euro. It could be a dollar, whatever it hits your account. And it can exchange that on the blockchain. Now, let's say you could do that and it can only cost you 0.1% to 0.25 to a max of 0.5%. Would you go that? Or would you go for the 2.25% or 2.99% plus 30 cents per transaction fees? Just a question. I think uh, that could be answered quite simply. And those are the things that I see are bullish. Now, on the flip side, because I have to give you two different sides of the same coin, is there are some things that are a little concerning. One of those being the, the macro factor. We just saw Jerome Powell come out and the uh, Fed minutes looks like they're going to keep raising rates. On top of that, we saw a delinquency rate as far as credit card loans take an uptick, although not too major. This is from the Fred economic data. And you can see that the delinquency rate rose from 1.57 to 2.25. But I got to tell you, it's a lot better than what we did before 2005 and below. So I mean, but it is an uptick, so it's just something to be concerned about. Also, personal savings rate has uh, dropped at the face of the earth. Again, this is a Ben's website, although it did come up just a little bit. We're at 4.7%, but that's okay because us Americans, we are awful at saving money. The only way that we could do it is uh, if we get uh, uh, modern monetary theory and we get a bunch of funds from the government. <laughs> that's pretty much the only way, which is what happened during the coronavirus. And then also, don't forget that uh, the Treasury yield uh, has been inverted for quite some time. And when you see uh, the short term, uh, like we'll say, uh, let's say three months here, treasury yield, uh, as it inverts for a very longer treasury yield, and when that inverts, it's usually a sign of a recession incoming. And this is the latest one. You can see that uh, for three months, for a treasury yield, it's 4.8%, which is pretty good, quite honestly. And a 10-year is 3.92. That's not what it should look like. It should look something like this or this or this. But I will tell you, you know, in the um, in recessions, it always kind of happens like this. Here's 2007 before our big recession came about. And you'll probably see it in 2001 as it goes about. So, again, treasury yields are one of those windows into the future. And then also, don't forget, uh, federal funds, you can see that uh, over time, uh, Jerome Powell and the gang, they keep raising those rates. But what's interesting is you'll see that. See this uh, the shadowy area? This is all recessions. So when you take a look at the federal funds rate, you can see what the what the Fed does. They you know, as uh, there's a big economic heat up, they try to slow things down. They flatten off, and then when, when a recession comes, they cut it. 
And then there's another economic boom and they start to raise rates. And then when we had a recession, they cut it. And then they allowed us to have a big economic boom for quite some time till around right here. And then said, so this is just too much. And then they cut it. And then we had coronavirus, kind of weird. Then they put it down to zero and now we're back at it again. So I still think we're going to see a uh, recession incoming, maybe Q3, maybe Q4, but how long do they usually last? Well, if you can take a look at this chart, you know, usually about 12 months, eight to 10, eight to 14 months or somewhere around there. And then we're just right back on track again. So again, you got two and two and a half years, consider yourself lucky. And lastly, one of the things that uh, did concern me initially was whale number three, or as now is whale number four. It's the, uh, if you go to bit info charts, you can see uh, wallets, uh, one of the largest whales out there, and they have been doing nothing. I mean, essentially nothing but selling. And uh, this goes back February 16th. This is just plus, just no transactions, but they've been selling, 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 1,900, 2,900. And they've been selling, essentially, they haven't bought anything really since November 14th, 2022. And you can see they were buying a boatload of stuff and every occasional time they would sell. But they were buying, buying, a lot of green here, a little bit of red. But then, of course, as we come up here, it's been doing nothing but sell and sell and sell and sell. So that initially concerned me. And I took a look at them like, well, there's a couple things. First of all, this doesn't mean sell. I, I should make that very clear. I apologize. Uh, when we take a look at these, these movements, this is just from a wallet to a different wallet. So this means that this negative 1,666 Bitcoin, it means they're taking it from this wallet and uh, the wallet address is listed here above, 1LQ, something, 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 and it's transferred to another wallet. A lot of times that means to sell, but it doesn't always mean they're selling. Maybe they're just breaking it up because they have too much Bitcoin in one particular wallet. I have no idea. So they're moving here, moving here. Could be a sell, could be something. When they're adding in Bitcoin, they may have sold or they got it from somebody else. I don't know. But uh, what makes sense, you know, selling and, and buying makes, makes things quite simple. But if they are selling, if they are, I got to tell you, this, this wallet number three or now wallet number four is making some pretty poor choices, quite honestly. And you're going to see right here, this is the price of which it was sold or moved, whatever you want to call it. And you can see that down here, uh, they were accumulating uh, pretty well, actually, at 18,000, 15,777. That's pretty good. 16,526. But then they started to sell off 500 Bitcoin at 16,000 or 16,870. Then they sold another 1,000 at 16,006. I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea. 1,000, they sold at 17,058. They sold 500 at 16,827. You see where I'm going? I mean, they're selling at some pretty low prices, 16,005, 16,006, 16,7. When in all honesty... Maybe they've just been in the game for a lot longer. Dollar cost averaging and they're slipping out, but who knows? But that's really it. So look, that's it for today. Again, every so often I like to make some videos where I know I'm a little bit uh, bearish on that side. I think we're, not that we're in a bull market. I can't really say that for sure. But I think again, we're in the right place at the right time just for longevity as far as time. So that's it. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give us a thumbs up. Always consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. But that's it for today. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one.